Okay, so uh, in last class, we I think I have covered the whole Bab Satu. So now is your job, okay? Your job to read it before exam, okay? So, and also I think I gave you some homework. I guess it was, uh, I think these two, right? Five and six. And this is very simple questions, okay? But just to confirm that, you done it correctly. So I will go through it once with you, okay? So that you can check your answer. And I want to make sure that you really, really, really know what you're doing, okay? So now question five. So this is a very simple question now, okay? So when you look at this tempo preconan, let's say it is one year. So normally, I say normally, a business ialah satu tahun. Dia punya tempo perkenaan adalah satu tahun. Okay, satu tahun. So, dia ada bermula dan berakhir. Okay, always. Okay, there is a start and the end. Just like when you come for the tuition. Okay, then I say, what time does it start? It start at 8.30 and it has to berakhir pada bila? Berakhir pada 10pm. Betul tak? So, there is always a beginning, the, the awal and the akhir. Awal and the IQ. Alright, so let's say dia berakhir pada 1st April 2016. Then, you from here, you know that this is the ending. Then you have to find out what when is the beginning. Bila, ya, bila dia ber, bermula. Alright, so since this is satu tahun, so you work back. Then you, you go backward satu tahun and then you get the, the the date where it started. All right, so from here, since this is 1st April 2016, so you work back, so satu tahun bef uh, one year before will be 1st April 2015. Faham that? If okay, this one you got it correctly, you give me yes. So this is one year. So when you start calculating from uh, 1st April, you know, April, May, okay, normally I don't say April, May, June, July. I will say because April is the fourth month, right? Okay, bulan ke empat. So you check up 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, then will be one. One will be January 2016. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so it no or they will say thirty first March, twenty sixteen. It's the same thing. Okay, either thirty first March twenty sixteen or first April twenty sixteen because thirty first March the next day will be first April. So it's there. Okay, in fact, I think I I did this wrongly. Okay, let's cancel this one, and you write thirty first March twenty sixteen instead. All right, let me write properly. Uh, 31st March 2016. 31st March 2016. Okay, next. Now look at Penegan Steve. Same thing, setahun. Okay, now 1st August 2018. So, dia berakhir pada so, 1st October 2018 will be on... So, you, you, maybe you can start counting. Lah. Okay, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, dia berakhir pada July. Alright, you know that it is July. And it must be on the last day, okay? The last day of July will be 31st. So 31st July, which year? 2018, ma? right? So after one year, it will be 2019. So it will be 31st July, 2019. So this is one year. Okay? So, Penegan Albert, enam na. Look at this one. This is enam bulan saja. All right, but this kind of question rarely comes out. I think, in fact, it doesn't come out in SPM. 
Alright, because in SPM normally kita anggapkan adalah satu tahun satu tahun. Alright, so first November 2017, six months later, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four. So dia end on April. So April 2018. So what's the date? The last day of April. So berapa hari dalam April? Tiga puluh hari. So thirtieth April 2018. And I hope I know that I believe. Okay, I will say I believe that all of you you know the date right? Like January ada tiga puluh satu hari, and then February normally kita anggap ada dua puluh lapan, then March thirty first, April tiga puluh, May thirty first, okay, June will be tiga puluh, July tiga puluh satu, August. Wait, wait, wait. Correct, yeah. One. Ah. August 31, kan? Okay. Uh, what is August 31? The Madika, kan? Okay, then will be September 30. Then October 31. Sep uh, November 30. Then December 31. Okay, make sure you know this thing, ah. Huh? Okay, and normally kita anggap uh, like this lah. Okay, this will be twenty eight lah. Okay, and satu tahun kita anggap ada tiga lima enam hari, two hundred and fifty six days. Okay, weeks will be fifty two day uh fifty two weeks. Okay, I mean one year satu tahun ada lima puluh. These are the things that you should know. At your age now, alright. These are the things that you should know by your age now. This is something that what they learn, ah, uh, you learn in your I think standard standard six, ah, okay, maths. Okay, so that's it for number five. Now we go to six. So the entity penegan. So these are the chidi chidi. Where can you find this thing? You can find it in this part, right? All these are yellow nota. Okay. So, untung dinikmati sepenuhnya oleh pemilik manakala rugi ditanggung sepenuhnya oleh, oleh pemilik. So, everything by the pemilik. So, this is the... Okay, so let's see. Yes, milikan tunggal. Almost like wanted to write pemilikan tunggal. Should be milikan tunggal. Yep. Alright, then two. Mula dikumpul daripada anggota melalui penerimaan fee. When you see fee masuk, this is the keyword for your uh, the club dan persatuan. Club dan persatuan yang panggil apa? The, yes, korporasi ini. Alright? Yes, korporasi. Korporasi. Okay, number two. Three, diuruskan oleh ahli lembaga pengarah. So, who is the ahli lembaga pengarah in English? You no, know, the board of director. Ah, this one you know because you watch movie, you watch K drama. Okay, they will mention about the board of directors. Okay, and this board of directors normally will be lantikan dalam your mesyuarat agung tahunan. So, when you go to your uh, SMK, you are the mesyuarat agung tahunan or called. The AGM annual general meeting. Okay, so this is where every year akan uh they will want they will hold once okay one time every year to elect okay untuk uh elect in undi okay undi for your pengurusi your night pengurusi your pendahari setiap usaha uh night setiap usaha AJK AJK form one AJK form two okay and so on all right so in business here. Okay, they they got something like that, alright. But then it's not the the setiausa benda hari. Okay, they will have a director. Okay, CEO, CFO, C COO. Okay, so ini ialah dalam your syarikat. So when you see board of director, ahli lembaga pengarah, this is the keyword for syarikat. And then lastly, you nampak pekongsi aktif, pekongsi diuruskan oleh pekongsi, pekongsi, pekongsi ubi, pekongsi. That's it. So it's just that simple.
Okay, so are you all okay with your bab satu? If yes, clear so far, boleh follow, you type bab, B-A-B, bab satu in the chat box. Then we will officially move on to bab two. And this bab two is very, 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 very important. All right? Because this is where you build your foundation, okay, is, uh, is the ABC of accounting. So the rest, the rest, I only see a few responses. Okay, let's see. Emma, Yova, Ro, Tiran, Shivashini, Tugar, Baiti, Alia Hushna, Livli, Harish, Divina, Damia, Sheza, Idina. All right. Okay. So now, Bab 2. So here we are at Bab 2. So Bab 2, uh, there are two parts. You must know. Classifikasi and Persamaan Perekanan. Okay. So you must know this one. All right, classifikasi dan persamaan perekanan. And in classifikasi, okay, in English we call it classification. So, ada lima. Okay, this lima very important. Number one, hasil. If you don't know what is hasil, you think that your BM is very bad, very poor. In English, it's called income. All right, if you don't know what is income, I think you know what is income or revenue. Okay, meaning pendapatan. Alright, okay. So, number one, hasil. Number two is belanja. Belanja is very simple. Your expenses. Alright. Number three, your asset. Okay, but then in English, it's called asset as well. It's just that different spelling. The double S, dalam your English. Okay, then number four, your liability. Same thing, the direct translation, but in English, instead of I, kita guna Y in English. Right, so it's liability and liability. Okay, then number five is equity pemilik. All right, in English is called the owner's equity. Okay, so these are the five component component classification that you must know. All right, and make sure you understand it. 100%. Okay, so let's start from the first one, the hasil. Okay, so hasil, I told you, income, very, very um, simple definition, right? Okay, it means pendapatan. Okay, and bijana dalam satu tempo perekanan. All right, so contoh. Okay, so these are the example, and these are the terms that you will be seeing throughout your your accounting life, I would say. All right? So, you, you always number jualan. You know what's jualan, right? So, jualan in English means sales. So, when you draw barang, the, the thing, okay, yang the, the, the hasil yang kamu dapat untuk jual barang itu, you get, uh, you have to record it as jualan. Okay, so, I think I'll give you an example. So let's say now we do a what business? Yeah, baju business. I say we sell baju punya lah. All right. So kita panggil kedai baju nonsense. All right. So kita jual baju, printing shirt, okay, uh, polo tee, uh, and so on. All right. Okay. So now when kita jual satu t-shirt. Let's say a t-shirt is five ringgit. Uh, very cheap. Let's make it 20 ringgit. Okay. So, satu kelai baju, kita jual 20 ringgit. So, when I jual this 20 ringgit, this 20 ringgit, ialah saya punya hasil. You see or not? So, this is recorded as jualan. So, or we, kita panggil account jualan. Alright. Okay. Then, when you... Other business, when you have this kedai baju nonsense, you draw your shirt, 
we need to have a shop, satu store. Alright, store ini, okay, is to put our our inventory, our stock, our baju because kita ada banyak baju, okay, and takkan saya letak dalam saya punya rumah, rumah saya adalah untuk you know I need to stay, I need to live, no not enough space. Alright, so I need to pergi uh, sewa satu kedai or sewa satu uh, bilik or whatever, okay, a place. So or we in English we call it a rent. I need to rent a place to letak saya punya baju and at the same time I boleh pamperkan uh, okay, is that the right word I I can show it out okay I can show the the shirts just like when you go to the shopping mall you walk into H and M you can see also uh, the there are, there are this kind of shirts okay the design is like that then you can go and test okay go to the fitting room you unveil your test okay um S size terlalu kecil you go for M size all right so you need a place right so when you need a place you need to save okay but here when you save satu kedai you pay so when you save satu kedai or you rent a place you need to pay the money to the owner okay so that one kita panggil save di bayar because you bayar that's why it is a belanja, it's an expenses. Okay, but what about sewa di Then this will be opposite. So let's say you are the satu rumah. Okay, you, you, you are the shop. Okay, your, your place is too big. Okay, you tak akan guna the whole, uh, whole store or whole shop. Okay, maybe other sec first floor and second floor. So you maybe kita guna yang first floor itu and then kita sewakan second floor to orang lain. Ah, uh, when you say we can cover the orang lain, then you tapat do it. They have to pay us. So when they pay us, the do it itu kita panggil say we di terima because we terima say we too. And when we terima say we, we get money. It is a hassle. Are you clear so far? If yes, you give me a yes. So make sure you're following. You know the term. Because later you'll be seeing them again, 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 and again. All right. So now you don't have to memorize the term because in the exam the question will give you. Okay, they will give you the questions. And now most importantly is you understand, fahamkan what are these terms. All right. Okay. Now go to the third one. The commission diterima. Okay. This commission, you know what is commission that. Yeah, example. Okay. So this shirt, um, maybe I need to do some marketing. Okay, I need to promote kan saya punya baju. So I go to Instagram and I look for some influencer. Okay, I look for some influencers. Okay, other Instagram, other hundred k followers. You know, fifty k followers. Okay, so I DM America and then I ask. Okay, uh, let's say Ilin Leong. Okay, you know who is Ilin Leong. Okay, so you ask, you go and DM Ilin Leong. Okay, Ilin Leong ada uh, banyak followers. Okay, so you go and message her and then you ask her, uh, boleh tak? Okay, kita ada baju yang baru ini. Okay, so I will send you the shirts. Okay, and then you post it on the Instagram. Okay, and then I will give you a code or a promo code. Okay, so when your followers, you know, uh, buy the shirts through you because mereka nampak Ilin Leong punya post. Okay, banyak orang nampak, banyak followers, they see it. So, they will, uh, they will want to buy the shirts, baju kita, from Kedai Baju Nonsense. Okay, so when this happens, maybe I need to reward uh, this influencer, then I will tell her, okay, so maybe if satu follower beli baju, okay, from your page, from Instagram, saya akan bagi kamu lima ringgit. Is it or not? So, 20 ringgit is the cost of the baju, then from this 20 ringgit, I give her the, the commission of five ringgit because they promote, okay, they promote the shirt for us. So, I need to pay her something. It can be one lump, lump sum, okay? She will give her 100 ringgit. Or, I mean, for her level, you need to give like a few thousand, 10K, 20K, okay, to her. 
either one shot or commission based. Commission based meaning other other draw then you tapat the other draw you tapat. That's the commission. So it is flexible. Okay, while one shot meaning promo for one time, then I pay you. But then now we are talking about commission. So if let's say ten person come and buy the shirts, okay, then there will be ten piece times sepuluh so unit darab dengan lima ringgit, okay, then there will be fifty ringgit. So I have to give fifty ringgit to the uh, influencer. Okay, something like that. So this fifty ringgit we call it a commission. Okay, now look at this action here. Sekarang kita bayar ke atau kita terima? Tell me. Now the commission kita bayar or terima in the chat box. This fifty ringgit. We bayar or terima? See carefully, ah. Now the influencer is helping us to sell the shirts, and we have to pay them, pay her. The fifty ringgit, okay. So when we buy, ah, then we cannot say is a commission determiner because it the buyer. So when you buy, ah, is called commission the buyer. Can you see now? This is satu bulan jo. Ah, okay. So this is a commission the buyer because you pay the commission. Okay, then when you understand this commission the buyer, then you can understand what is commission determiner lah. So this will be the balik. Okay, now maybe you are the shirts. Then at the same time, Bob. Okay, Bob maybe is your friend. Bob comes and asks you, hmm, Bob, you lah or satu dia jual kasut. Ah, okay, kita jual baju. So Bob nampak, yo, ini kedai baju nonsense macam ada banyak customer ah. Okay, so this Bob then bring his shoe to us and then ah. Uh, he wants to put the shoes in our store so that my customer when they come they can see Bob shoe and then they will buy the shoes. Can you see or not? So now, of course, Bob need to give me something, right? That I can say you promote you with your shoes for free, kan? Okay, so when then the, we will negotiate. Okay, kita akan bincang. Okay, let's macam tu lah. Okay, so setiap uh, kasut that kita jual. Kita nak fifty ringgit. You see not? Okay, so when we help Bob to shop, uh, to sell his shoes, okay, then we get commission of fifty ringgit. So let's say kita dapat boleh jual sepuluh unit pasang kasut, and setiap unit ialah fifty ringgit. So our commission will be five hundred ringgit. So this commission kita akan terima. Therefore, it is called a commission. Diterima. Nampak tak? So it's very important lah the kata gaji itu. You terima ke atau you bayar? Okay. If terima, very simple. Commission diterima. If kamu bayar, commission dibayar. Sewa. You bayar ke atau you terima? You bayar sewa, then sewa dibayar. If you terima sewa, then that is called a sewa diterima. Are you clear so far? If yes, you give me a clear. C L E A R clear. Okay, so make sure this one you you make it correctly. The terima, the buyer. So in conclusion, we can say that okay, even though it's not to the end, but we can conclude so far. Whenever you see a the terima, okay, you nampak satu the terima term, dia ialah satu hasil, because you terima hasil, okay. And when you nampak satu the buyer, you buyer, then this is a belanja. Okay, your ibu bagi kamu duit makan. Okay, your parents give you allowance every week, fifty ringgit. So when kita terima fifty ringgit daripada ibu kita, kita dapat fifty ringgit hasil. Apa nak? Because kita terima. Okay, now you bagi kantin sekolah. You nampak satu nasi lemak ayam. Oh, sedap nasi lemak ayam. I nak beli. Okay, so you want to buy the food. Okay, for your lunch, kan? Okay, takkan you tak you tak nak makan? Okay, so you go there, you pay. Nama nak? Okay, nasi lemak ayam goreng lima ringgit. So you buy it. So when you buy it lima ringgit, itu maksudnya nasi lemak itu ialah kamu punya belanja.
Is it very simple? Terima hasil Baya Belanja Alright, okay Now, continue Discount determinant simple lah Okay, so When you uh, Okay, when you beli uh, Ni Beli baju Or you beli barang Okay So when you beli banyak Sometimes they will say Oh, you beli banyak Then uh, kita, uh, kita akan dapat discount Okay, we will get discount So when we get discount, when kita terima discount, it's called discount diterima. Okay, so same thing. Kita juga boleh berikan discount kepada customer-customer. Okay, let's say you beli 5 baju, then saya bagi uh, 20% discount for the shirts. So, customer akan beli banyak. Beli 5 uh, helai baju. Okay, so when they beli, I bagi discount. So that's called discount diberi. Okay, next. Dividend diterima. Okay, this dividend is uh, something is a good thing. Yeah, first I would say it's a good thing. And how do you get this dividend? Dividend is a form of uh, a reward, a money. Okay, apa di, apa reward ini? Reward for what? Okay, let me draw something. Actually, this uh, you don't have to know it like very in depth you just need to like roughly know why is it a hasil all right so uh for those of you okay i think your parents must you know believe stock market share buy share okay what is buy share meaning there is a company let's say genting the premium outlet team park Okay, a casino, okay, uh, and, and hotel, all these things. Okay, so they are making a lot of money. So now you not beli saham dia, share we call saham. So you show money in, let's say, and I don't know, lah, okay, so it uh, based on the rate. Okay, this will be too deep, but for now, okay, you just need to know you will. Put money into the company. All right. So when you put money into the company, anyone lah, okay. So you put money into the company, they will use your money to do other stuff. Untuk untung, okay. They will make more money. Ah, uh, they will build more hotels. Is it? All right. They will build other stuff. So. When these hotels, after they build the hotels, and then they untung, they will earn more money. Betul tak? So when they bring more money back, okay, because kita telah labo, we call invest. Okay, when you put money into the, the company, you invest, we call it invest into the company, and then the company go and do their stuff, and then they, they earn money, okay, they earn a profit, and then this profit, they can go back to the company and the remaining sum they will come back to kita. Nampak tak? Okay. So from here, because kita invest, so kita letak duit dalam, okay, we help them to earn money, to make money, of course, we have to get back some reward. Can you see it? So this reward, kita panggil, we don't call it a reward, we call it a dividend. So this is a dividend and kita terima, that's why it's called a dividend diterima. And when you terima, this is a hasil. Alright, so this is a dividend. So uh, this dividend we learn more when we go to uh, form 5, bab 5. Yep. Alright, saham, dividend. We got dividend AQ, dividend interim, okay? And then dividend will based on your saham, ada saham keutamaan, saham biasa, and a lot of stuff, okay? But don't stress yourself first. Uh, this is for Form 5, Bab 5. So you still have time, like one, one and a half year to get there, okay? So no worries. But now you just need to know like what is dividend and what uh, dividend is a belanja or hasil. So now we know dividend is a hasil for sure. Okay, now continue. Okay, after that, 
will be uh, your faedah atas simpanan. Okay, faedah in English we call it interest. Okay, and simpanan you know saving lah. Okay, so this faedah atas simpanan is a bit similar to dividend. Okay, but what makes them different is dividend is always linked to company, syarikat. Okay, but then when we talk about interest faedah, normally we link it to bank. Okay, so for people, okay, to encourage people to save more in the bank, to put money into the bank, the bank in returns give them interest. So very formula one, a very popular one is called a fixed deposit or FD. Uh, I think your parents will always ask you, okay, uh, uh, tahun, uh, you must, you know, but some saving, okay, you save your money and then lepas tu, you letak dalam bank, okay? So when you reach a certain amount of uh, amount, okay, then let's say 1,000 ringgit, Okay, then you can put into this FD. Why put into the FD, this fixed deposit? Because the bank will give a bit higher interest. Because normal account, a basic account, basic saving account, mereka either don't give interest, mereka tabagi interest, or they give very minimum. For example, 0.025%. Bro, you know how much is 0.025%? Ah? Okay, let's do a simple calculation. Ah. Okay, let's say you uh, you the kumpu 1000 ringgit, you save 1000 ringgit. Okay. And then this is annually, ah. normally this is per annual, meaning satu tahun. This FD also, all the interest rate will go by one year. Okay, so let's say you got 1000 ringgit. And your interest is just 0.025%. You do the math, so you use a calculator and, and calculate. So you use 1000 times 0.025. You have to divide by 100, yeah, because this is a percentage. All right, so you divide by 100. So your interest every year, the bank will give you 0.25. Yes, 0.25, meaning this is a 25 cent. Okay, but when you go to the fixed deposit, okay, now I think the rate because of pandemic. So the so the amount we receive from the bank is lesser than we receive from the company. Now, Harish, a uh, good question. Okay, but it depends. Yeah, there's a risk in uh, investing in a company. All right, there's a risk. R I S K. Okay, so if you invest in a company, because company, you don't know the company will do good or bad. Can you see it? So let's say you invest in a company. What if next year the company suddenly, because of COVID 19, then the company closed down, bankrupt? Then you cannot get back the money that you invest. Let's say you invest 1000 ringgit into the company. And then the company bankrupt, then you cannot get back your 1,000 ringgit anymore. But if you put this 1,000 ringgit into a bank, even though low interest, but your 1,000 ringgit is still there. You get what I mean? So this is something we talk about risk. But now you don't have to go there because normally this risk, you will learn this uh, in your university, You're like in finance, risk management. So why you do this? Okay, but come back to here. Okay, so same bank, they will offer a fixed deposit. Why fixed deposit? They want you to put the money there, lock it for some time. Okay, normally the minimum year is like one year. Minimum, then to up to 30 or, or how many years. Meaning you have to put there you know, as long as possible. But for this normal basic account, you can draw anytime you want. Okay, today you deposit, and tomorrow you withdraw anytime. Flexible. So this is called flexible saving. You see, that's why the rate is very low. 
But then when you go to for fixed deposit, because of the COVID-19 now, the rate, okay, the, the base rate normally average is about 2% per annum. Okay, I still remember like before COVID lah, in 2018, 2019, okay, the rate I checked before is 4%. So 4% normally is in good economy. Okay, but now because of it is still in recovery state, okay, so it's just about 2%. You know, during COVID, they go down to 0.75% for fixed deposit. Okay, now same 1,000 ringgit, if you put in a deposit, fixed deposit for one year, lock it for one year, it times 2%. How much you get? 2 ringgit. Can you see the difference? 0 0.25 compared to 2 ringgit. But still, 2% is damn bloody low. <laughs> All right? So uh, that's why normally people put money in the bank is for emergency fund. Okay, so let's say suddenly, you know, you need a huge amount of money, you go to hospital, or you, you know, I don't know, all right? So you need something that's flexible. That's why normally they put in bank. Most bank is more flexible. So you want to withdraw money anytime you like, okay? But for those people who have extra money, ah, they will invest, they will do investment. Okay, this in bank, we call it saving. Okay, when you throw money into the bank, it's called saving. When you want to investment, you got a lot of options. Okay, out there in the market. Maybe you can go uh, a market fund. You know, you go for, to invest in company like the one. You buy stock, all right? And then you can, you know, uh, now the trend, cryptocurrency. You know, there are a lot, a lot. You need, you need trust, mutual fund. Ah, there are a lot options out there to invest. But all this will be at your own risk. You know what I mean? Because anytime possible, your 1,000 ringgit will be gone. I don't know. Okay? So that's a risk in investment. That's why they say high return. If you want high return, then you have to bear high risk. Meaning the more you can bear the risk, then the more returns you will get. Definitely more than 2%. Alright? So, what I suddenly here, or because of FAEDA. Alright? So, when bank give you this money, can you see now, this uh, two, two, uh, 25 cent or 2 ringgit, you know, given by the bank because you save. Ah, so, this is called FAEDA ATAS SIMPANAN. Is it not? Because you see in the bank, so they give you a faida. So when this is something that you receive, you terima, therefore it is a hasil. All right, so far, are you following? Okay, la. if yes, you give me a following. Yep. Good. Okay, so I hope you learn something more than the syllabus. Okay, because just as I went out to like, you know, all these, uh, what are the, the investment, the risk. Okay, so this is uh, something that beside your, I would say your traditional education, okay, because what we learn from school and so on are called a traditional education. So it teach you, and then uh, equip you with the knowledge, theoretical knowledge, you know, go to university and then get you a job, right? But other than that, you need to have your own study as well, your own education, okay? So there are a lot of education, like, you know, spiritual education, uh, religious, uh, mind, soul, and even financial education, okay? So these are the things that really will... Uh, something that you need when you go out to work and face, you know, all this thing. Because money, just from earning money, salary, is not enough. Okay, it doesn't really cover, give you a, a, a comfortable life. So other than that, you need to find ways, okay, to 
to earn or to generate more income legally all right we don't promote we don't advocate anything that is of illegal okay anything that you do make sure you do it legally because what for if you can earn a lot of money but at the end of the day you are in the prison you can't enjoy the the things that you you do all right so come back to here Okay, so there is a hutang lapo tabule and pengurangan hutang ragu. Okay, I won't explain. I won't go into this thing yet because if I explain now, you, I'm sure you can't comprehend it. You won't understand it at all. All right. So this one later when we go to bab eight, we talk about this. Yeah. Right. But just remember when you see this thing, these are in hasil. All right. Then in hasil we got hasil operasi and hasil bukan operasi. So very simple operasi meaning apa yang Uh, langsung lah, okay, berkaitan dengan aktiviti harian. Okay, your daily activity. Wah, hasil bukan operasi meaning ialah pendapatan yang dijana daripada aktiviti yang tidak langsung. Alright, just example. Tadi dividend ini, ini adalah tidak berkaitan with our daily uh, business. What is our business? Kita jual baju. Faham tak? Okay, so baju is our business. So, When kita go and investment all this investing in other companies and we get dividend, that is a hasil bukan operasi, because dia tak berkaitan dengan uh, operasi kita. Alright, so that is the definition for you know hasil operasi and hasil bukan operasi. You just need to know what they means, but uh, it's not that important. Okay, not very important. So okay, next one will be belanja. So just now. Uh, I already covered this too, right? So it's basically very simple stuff. Okay, but before that, what's the definition? Belanja adalah penting bagi memastikan operasi perniagaan dapat dijalankan dengan lancar. Okay, so uh, you need to spend, you need to belanja, expense to make sure your your business beroperasi dengan lan lancar, smoothly. Okay, just like our clothing business, kedai baju, nonsense. All right, so In order to sell more shirts, to sell shirts, of course you must buy your sewer, sewer di buyer. You need to pay your rent, or else you cannot use the place, and the customer can come in and shop around your store, isn't it? Okay, you need to pay for your electric, your electric bill, your water bill. Okay, what are these? Where are these? Uh, electric water bill. We call it kada bayaran. Ini. Okay, so kada bayar is a term for all the bill electric, bill IA, bill telephone, bill internet. You know, it's very essential. Okay, if you don't have Wi-Fi at now, nowadays you the satu business without Wi-Fi, the business is 90% dead. Okay, mati. You need to have Wi-Fi, right? When customer comes in, they they also want Wi-Fi. Okay, now accounting, cloud computing, everything requires Wi-Fi. All right, so telephone, you know, so we need all this belanja. We need to do all these expenses so that our business can go smoothly. You know what I mean? So that is your belanja. So okay, now belan. So belan example here will be, uh, you need to buy shirts to sell shirts. Normally here, when we are learning, we are learning about trading. Perdagangan. Okay, normally here we learn about trading. There are a lot of other business like trading, manufacturing. Okay, manufacturing you lah, uh, from factory, and then you what 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 process process process, and then you get something, satu produk. Okay, but then for trading is what you beli baju from somewhere and then you jual lagi. Okay, is something like a reseller. Ah. Okay, just like you, you go to Adidas store and then official Adidas and then you get their shoes. You go to official Nike, you get their shoes, Jordan, Gucci. Okay, and then you kumpulkan and then you you sell in your shops. Okay, in your store and you mark up the price. Okay, make it more a little bit expensive so that you can earn the untung and then you sell to the the customers. You see, so this is like a trading. So we at here we are. Dealing with trading, uh, business. Okay, so come back to this baju. So before we 
kita ada stok, kita mesti beli daripada somewhere. Okay, we have to buy baju and then kita boleh sell. So when we buy the baju, that's called belian. Nampak tak? The beli. So beli an. So it becomes a apa? A kata nama. Ah, something like that. Alright, beli is kata kerja mah kan? So when you put an 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 belian, so it's a kata uh, kata 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 nama am. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so this is a stock. Sewa dibayar, sewa uh, commission dibayar, diskon diberi. Faedah atas pinjaman. Okay, tadi faedah you know is interest. Okay, tadi ialah faedah atas simpanan, right? Saving, then kita terima faedah. But now, something similar concept, but we are pinjam sekarang. We are borrowing the money now. Okay, because for business, sometimes we have to borrow money from the bank. Ah, when you borrow money from the bank, the bank won't be so stupid to lend you the money. Gun, what, what for? I want to lend you the money. So the bank will charge something called faeda, the interest. So when the bank lend the money to us, kita dapat pinjaman itu, then yearly maybe I have to pay a 8% of what I have pinjam. This is like your creator, all right? Your, your family, your parents probably will go to the bank and then loan, pinjam loan, okay? Pinjaman, pinjaman means loan, all right? Okay, so from the bank and then they go and buy the car, okay? So where is money from? From the bank. And you think the bank so nice, uh, give you money, go and buy the car, okay? So, of course not. So, for them to pinjam kita the money, the bank will get something in return. Okay, they want they want to have their own rewards as well. Okay, so the bank will charge us something called faida interest. So every year or every month, I have to pay interest, maybe eight percent depending on the rate, or nine percent or seven percent. Okay, so when kita bayar interest ini, bayar bayar, so we come back to a belanja. Therefore, uh, a faida atas pinjaman is a belanja. Okay, then your insurance though, you know what's insurance are. So for every business, normally we buy insurance. What if suddenly uh, your business kena fire? Okay. So if either fire, your, your business, your, your shop is on fire, you make sure you have your insurance to cover the cost. Okay. And then you add a gaji, gaji salary. You run your clothing store, you must be other uh or run. Ada pekerja. Okay, so I have to pay for your gaji. Okay, then kata bayaran, belanja arm. So, anything that is belanja other than that will be called belanja arm. Alright? So, alat tulis lah. Okay, stationery. Susun nilai, hutang lapu, hutang ragu. Okay, this one later. Okay, but know that all this is belanja and we learn this in bab 8 later as well. Okay, so same thing ada belanja operasi. Then, it will be secara langsung lah. And then, belanja program operasi will be Tidak langsung lah. Okay, so something like uh, the, the hasil, lang, uh, hasil operasi dan hasil bergang operasi. Okay, then the third one will be asset. The fourth one, liability. And the fifth one, equity per million. Okay, quickly. Asset, what is asset, 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 asset? Okay, asset means your hatta. Simple as that. Okay, so imagine uh, what is your hatta? Something that is normally is of physical. Right, so think at your house. So in your house, you have apa? You got TV. Ah, TV is satu asset. Why? Because TV, you can use it more than a year. Okay, normal like that. So it can be there, and then you can use it again and again and again. All these are asset or something that you own. Okay, something that belongs to you, like your money. Ah, you, you have the choice over your money. You can choose it to spend or not to spend. So that is your asset. What else? Imagine the car, you know, the house, your bed, your shirts. All these are your asset. Because you use the money, you buy it. So this is yours now. It is mine. Okay, all this calculator, your phone, your computer, you know, all these major parabot are assets. Therefore, you can see or not. So something that the company own, you know, like uh, properties, furniture, car, money, and etc. So in asset, kita akan break down to dua, dua part. 
That asset bukan semasa dan asset semasa. And what asset bukan semasa? So asset bukan semasa ialah anything that is more than one year. Lebih daripada satu tahun, kita panggil dia asset bukan semasa. Contoh, premise. What is premise? Premise means uh, bangunan, kedai and so on. Lah. Okay, so when you look at all the shop, the tall building, KLCC, all this, kita panggil premise. Okay, so now, think ah, uh, this premise can be more than one year dah. Boleh. Takkan you, you stay in your house, after one year you change another house, you move to another house? No. After one year, your house is still there. After five years, your house is still there. After 20, 30 years, your house is still there. Therefore, premise is definitely more than a year. And when it is more than a year, kita panggil dia asset bukan semasa. Are you clear? If yes, you give me an ABS, asset bukan semasa. Okay, very good. So let's continue. Okay, so use the same concept. Now we go to machine than gender. So in uh, some company, some some business, they need machine. Okay, to what like my 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 business this uh baju nonsense, kada baju nonsense. Good. We need to have machine, machines such as to do the printing. You no, know, all this machine need to pay like satu juta, uh, not juta, pula. Uh, Satu ribu, okay, or sepuluh ribu. I don't know about that. 10k, 100k for this machine. So, takkan you believe this machine, you use it for six months or five days, then torsa. Eh, cannot be like that, lah, bro. Can. So, you expect that this machine, you use it more than what? A year. So, when it's more than a year, this is a machine. I said, bukan semasa. Okay, continue kenderaan. Same thing. Your dad bought a new car last year. Takkan this year, he sell the, the car and then buy a new one. Unless, unless the person is very rich. Okay, every four to five months, they took car. But for company use, company won't do it. For business, they won't do it. Why? Because of cost. When you change a car, you, you, you pollute, buy a, buy a, do it. No, then that will result in rugi. Takkan. Therefore, all this kendaraan, the car, the BMW, the lorry, okay, is definitely more than a year. Therefore, I said once a master. Okay, then you got kelengkapan. What is kelengkapan? In English, we call it a fixture and fit things. So, contoh, penyaman udara, the aircon, the petit surgery, your fridge, the kipas. Okay, all this, normally they are stick. Okay, they are fixed on. We call it a kelengkapan. All right, so all these are kind of fixtures and fittings. Your aircon, you know, the lampu, all these are kelengkapan. And for sure, more than a year. Okay, then pejabat, since when you change your kipas? 20 years ago. Kan? Since the day you born, the kipas already there. So it doesn't change unless you move in between them. But if you stay at the same house, okay, the kipas must be always there. Okay, then pejabat, oh, sorry. At the term alatan pejabat. Let me write properly. Alatan pejabat. All right. So these are the alatan that we're going to use in the office. Contoh, the computer, the machine cetak, the printing machine, and, and so on. All right. So all this will be in the alatan pejabat category. Okay. You need to know this term because when you see a computer, we are going to use the term alatan pejabat. Right? And computer, more than a year. So, I said, bukan semasa. Perabot, your rak pameran, your major, your sofa, cabinet, you know, all this, your furniture, we call it a perabot. All right? And it's more than a year, therefore, it is under asset bukan semasa. Okay. So, next, you see, it's lebih daripada, melebihi setahun. Okay, now, what if lesser than a year? Can you see or not? Lesser than a year. So lesser than a year, we call it asset semasa. The current asset. Current one. Current means one year. Okay? Non-current. Bukan semasa means more than a year. Okay, so what are the assets semasa? Contoh, the account belum terima. All right, what is account ter belum terima? Contoh, come back to this example. We are selling shirts. Okay? 
So imagine you sell shirts to Jeffrey. What if the company has to repair the condom? Will it come under belanja? Yes, Harish, it will come under belanja. Because you repair, ma, you don't have to buy condoms baru. You just repair only. So when you repair, your date can go So that is a belanja. All right? So uh, let's say come back to here, your Jeffrey. So kita draw shirts to Jeffrey. Let's say the shirt is about 20,000. Okay, normally in trading business, because what? Satu, satu transaction 20K, satu transaction 100K. So what we normally do is get to do it on credit. Secara credit. What does this secara credit mean? Okay, so it means that when we sell the shirts, we give the shirts out to Jeffrey. Then we give them a period, satu tempo, a time. Okay, normally, depend on, okay, it can be 30 days. Sorry, 60 days or 90 days. Okay, or sometimes they like 45 days. Okay, depending on the company, the policy. Okay, so let's say 30 days. Uh. All right, so we will give Jeffrey 30 days tempo. We give them time. Okay, and in these 30 days, let's say one week later, two weeks later, Jeffrey will have to pay back the 20,000. Is it or not? Normally, when we buy things, we, we pay, and then sure we get the stuff. Meaning, dalam satu hari bunya. Okay, but now, secara so credit will be, I give the shirts to Jeffrey, Jeffrey can have the shirt first, baju first, and then I bagi Jeffrey 30 hari untuk settlekan uh, 20 ribu itu. Is it not? So when this thing happened, when I give out the shirts, I haven't get my money yet, I belum terima 20k ini, so Jeffrey will be in my account, belum terima. Why belum terima? Because kita belum terima tweet itu. Do you understand or not? If yes, you give me a A, B, T. So with that being said, the A, B, T, when you flip over, that's why we have something called the A, B, B, the account yang belum bayar and it is under liability. So what is account belum bayar? Same thing. So now let's say I beli shirt dari the Bob. Okay. Bob give me shirts, let's say it's 50k. Okay, I tap out stock itu, and then Bob give me 20 days to settle. Remember that? So in these 20 days, I belum uh, bayar ke brother Bob. So when I belum bayar in my account, I have to I have to put Bob into my account yang belum bayar. Because I haven't paid him. I need to record down so that whenever I see, oh yeah, Bob, I belum bayar lagi. So make sure cepat-cepat payment bayar balik kepada Bob 50k ni. Okay, so now do you understand ABB now? Therefore, ABB is a hutang. Ah, because you owe Bob money, you belum bayar lagi. Therefore, it is a liability. Semasa. Okay, later we will come back to liability again. So for now, do you understand what is ABB? If yes, you give me an ABB juga. So, in the corner, it's very, very straightforward. It's either me to you or you to me. It's either I belum terima wang daripada ke awak or saya belum bayar kepada kamu. It's like that. Okay, it's either me or you. It's either up or down, either front or back, either black or white. Okay, there's no gray here in accounting. Okay, now let's continue. Uh, after ABT, okay, then this is very simple, like inventory. Inventory means in old term, kita panggil dia stock. Ini ialah perkataan lama. Sekarang kita guna inventory. So this is the barang niaga lah. So in this example, our barang niaga ialah inventory. I mean, sorry. Our inventory ialah baju. Okay, if you are in a kasut business, then kasut will be your inventory. All right, then tunai. Tunai means cash. Lo. Okay, bank will be tunai yang di bank. Can you see that? Sometimes the question we say tunai di tangan. Tunai di tangan meaning the money on your hand. So the money on your hand is the cash. Lah. 
Okay, but there are also two nine the bank. When you say two nine the bank, meaning all the money that you have is in the bank. Therefore, we don't we record it as a bank account bank. All right, and then you got deposit the top in you know the fixed deposit that I mentioned to you. So when you have savings in your account as a fixed deposit, dear you also have to access a master juga. Okay, but of course this fixed deposit must uh must be lesser than one year lah. I mean. It can be lesser than one year, but sometimes fixed deposit you can show a withdraw. So I forgot to tell you. Let's say your fixed deposit you lock it for one uh twenty years. Why ten years? Maybe they have higher interest four percent. If one year is just one percent, okay. So you want to go for twenty years. Now, if in between these twenty years you withdraw the money, you can okay. You boldly withdraw the money, but once you withdraw the money. The four percent will be gone. Nah, contoh ah, let's say you have been saving this for nineteen years. Okay, you have been putting this money in slot in this uh fixed deposit for nineteen years. Sudah, sudah nineteen years ah. Okay, on the last year, this last year already ah, you suddenly perlu duit. Okay, you need money, a lot of money, and then you you are forced to take out money from your fixed deposit. The moment you take out money, haven't reached twenty years yet. You still got one more year. The bank don't care. When you withdraw, the four percent sure we gone. You the other four percent into, meaning all the past nineteen years, you've been putting the money in something that does not have interest at all. All right. So that's that's why fixed deposit in assets and assets because it's very uh flexible. You can get it anytime. If you want, it's just that you the other interest, lah. All right. Then you got deposit kada bayaran. All right. So this one mm, deposit kada bayar, you know what? You know right? Let's say you need a line. Okay. Normally, when they want a line, they okay. Let's say your your house, uh, the telephone. Okay. So normally, lah. Uh, okay. I I don't know about now, lah. But back then, lah. Uh, okay. When you need a telephone, right? Okay. You want to register a line for your house. Then they will give you the the telephone, okay. Normally it's like that, and then you do like that on, okay. So you need to put a amount, satu amount deposit there. You know what I mean? So like maybe one hundred ringgit to the TN. Ah, uh, so this one hundred ringgit is just a deposit, so you can get it any time back. Okay, maybe after five years you can get back the deposit. So the money is still ours. The one hundred ringgit is not mereka, ya lah kita punya. So when that is your deposit, therefore it is your asset semasa. It's still asset because ya lah something yang kita miliki, alright. Then pelaburan investment lah, investment is asset semasa. Insurance prabaya, commission belum terima later. But when you see a prabaya, this is a keyword for your asset, okay? And belum terima juga is a keyword for asset. Just like your account belum terima is asset. Alright, so later in bab eight, we come back to here. Okay, quickly we go to liability. Oh no, so many words. Okay, almost, almost. And liability, yeah, lah, satu hutang. So you just need to know that liability is a hutang. Okay, and in English I put it what? Liability is a debt of the company which has to be settled in future. Alright, you know that means hutang. So when you say a hutang, maksudnya you must dibayar balik. Someday, maybe ten years later, five years later, or tomorrow. Okay, contoh. Let's say I pinjam duit. Now when I pinjam duit dari pada kawan, okay, that duit bukan saya punya. Walaupun at that moment I have the money, let's say I pinjam one hundred ringgit dari pada kawan. Okay, this one hundred ringgit, even though I can use one hundred ringgit, go and play, go and have fun. Okay, but this one hundred ringgit is not saya punya because tomorrow. I need to take another one hundred ringgit and buy a balik kepada Bob to my friend. Therefore, pinjaman is the best contoh for your liability. Is it not? This pinjaman bank. Okay. So same thing in liability. We got liability bukan semasa and liability semasa. And same thing we use the year satu tahun. Okay. To differentiate them. Okay. So bukan semasa means more than a year. Same thing. Just like I said, bukan semasa. So 
when pinjaman bank normally jela liability guan semasa when I say normally meanings sometimes it might be a liability semasa when okay if your pinjaman is more than lebih daripada satu tahun then it's a bukan semasa but if your pinjaman is lesser than a year then you have to put it here so this normally is a short term pinjaman satu tahun six months of pinjaman then it is a liability semasa you get it okay then you got a janji is a mortgage where janji is like uh you, have you seen a how do i put it it's just like a house ah, okay contoh your house mortgage all right so this house you know that you know why bank you pinjam you do it to beli house ah, beli rumah Okay, why? Because the when the moment we beli house, kan, the house is actually belong to the bank. Okay, then they give us the money to buy the house. So if any time, how do I put it? Ah? so this is actually something like that. So if you understand how they borrow money from the bank, okay. So let's say this is the bank. Okay, so this is me. Okay, let's say I see a house that I like. Okay, so this is a two room. Okay, so let's say this is uh, um, uh, maybe five hundred thousand. Okay, so at this moment, saya even though I have 500,000, I won't go and pay 500,000 cash to buy a house. Okay? I will go and pin up data by the bank. Okay? I will go and, you know, check my loan, uh, you know, my credit to see if my loan is approved or not from the bank. Okay? So, when that happens, so now, uh, the bank can actually borrow, you know, lend the money up to 100%. Okay? For now, uh, okay? Normally, people don't have to buy, uh, they, they buy houses without down payment okay back then you have to pay at least 10 percent of down payment okay then 90 percent loan okay, meaning this 10 percent you need to pay with your own money and then 90 percent from the bank okay but now uh, let's put this simple 100 percent okay so when your loan is approved then the bank will pin jump all this 100 percent 100 percent of 500,000 meaning 500,000 so that we give you the 500,000 ringgit. And from this 500,000 ringgit, you can buy this house. Okay? So, but why will bank pinjam this 500,000 ringgit? Okay? And of course, at the same time, every month, I need to pay my installment. Okay? Or we call bulanan ansoran. Okay? I need to pay back. Maybe every month, I pay 2,500 ringgit. Okay, and in this 2005 ringgit, Tola included the faeda. Do you still remember the faeda atas pinjaman? Ah, this faeda. So in here, there is a principal money and the interest. I think you have you might have learned this in your maths. All right. So, but what if one day saya tetapat bayar this 2005 ringgit? Okay. So when you cannot pay back this 2,500 ringgit, the bank will have your house. Is it not? So this house actually doesn't belong to you. It actually belongs to the bank. So if you cannot pay back this money, then the bank will come and take your house and then they go and do auction. Okay? Uh, they put it in one place, I forgot what they call it. Okay, so the house will be on the court, and then people will come here and see if they want this house or not, and then they will buy it. Uh, when they buy it, the money, yes, lay long, correct, Harish. Okay, they, they will put it in lay long, okay, and then when people buy the 500,000 ringgit, okay, then the bank will have this money, and then we settle your, your, your debt, how much you own the bank. 
Okay, then the remaining, if other, then only give back to you. That's why the bank is comfortable to loan you the money. Why? Because this is an asset. The house is an asset. And anytime that if you cannot pay back the money, the bank will take this asset and sell for this 500,000 ringgit to cover their money in money. Ah, all right. So that's something like Kaidai Janji. Okay, so this house we call it something like a mortgage loan. Kaidai Janji. Mortgage loan. Okay, so come back to here. So whenever you see a gada janji or pinjaman is normally a uh, liability bukan semasa. Okay, so you come back to after that will be liability semasa. So liability semasa will be lesser than a year, and then chondo will be a kambulu mayala, and then overdraft bank. What is overdraft bank? Let's say your bank only got five hundred ringgit, but you go and write a check for one thousand ringgit. Ah. So when you add five hundred ringgit only, you pay one thousand ringgit, meaning your bank account still minus five hundred lah. You really take more than what you have. So this minus five hundred is called the overdraft bank. Now because it's min minus, I jadi a uh, hutang bank sekarang. Okay, now I hutang the bank for five hundred ringgit. So that is called overdraft bank. Then insurance when you see belum bayar atau belum terpole, this is a keyword for your. Uh, liability as well. Okay, so this same thing will be learned in your bulk eight. So this is something like inilah. So belum terima prabaya asset, belum bayar belum terpole a will be a uh, liability. Okay, Harris. One paying money to the bank can I put my house as a guarantee for anything? Yes, you can. All right. So depending now. Okay. So uh. Normally, it depends on what kind of financing you're going for. Okay, so normally when you're paying money back to the bank, okay, uh, you can do other stuff to your bank. Like after that, after 10 years or 20 years, let's say you need some money, a capital to do business or whatever, you can do, go refinancing. What does refinancing mean? Meaning, the same house, you borrow money from the bank again for the house because in this 10 years or 20 years, you already pay back some money, right? Let's say 500,000, you already pay back 250,000. So the balance, you got 250,000. And then when you do refinancing, let's say after 10 years, 20 years, your house, the market value becomes 800,000. Okay, because the price of the house every year will be different. Okay, so normally, averagely, after seven or 10 years, the price of the house, the market value will go up. Uh, That's called uh, appreciate. Okay, so let's say now it becomes 800,000 ringgit. So now you have an option. You can go to a bank and apply for a refinancing. So you you can, you can go for maybe 70% or 50% of this 800,000 ringgit. So let's say uh, 60%. You want to refinance 60% of this 800,000 ringgit. So 60% will be 480,000. So the bank will give you another 480,000. Okay? But of course, the, the loan amount, monthly payment will be different again. Lah. So you need to pay more now by monthly. But what we need is this 480,000 and 80,000, maybe you can use it for 80,000 to clear off this 250,000 ringgit. And then the remaining balance, you go and maybe uh, you want to do your business or you want to buy another new house or so on. Okay, so this is uh, something on the planet, but this is like extra, extra, too extra. All right, okay, so come back to here. Okay, we have done liability. So last one, equity permulae, the owner's equity. So this is the bahagian penegan yang disumbangkan dan dimiliki oleh pemilik. Can you see the owners, the permulae equity? So this is the part where it's berkaitan dengan permulae. You have to know that tadi all this asset liability is the company, perniagaan. Sekarang, ini equity permulae ialah berkaitan dengan permulae. Kita. 
So here is a formula that you need to know. The equilibrium formula equals to your modal. Modal means capital. Okay. Then tambah untung rugi. Untung rugi later we learn how to calculate it. And then you have to minus your ambulance withdrawal. Okay, because you will earn money. When you earn money, you put into your untung rugi. Okay, so when you withdraw money, you put into uh, ambulance. All right, so that's it for your equity permit. So now quickly, we're running out of time. So let's do the first question together. All right, so are you ready for the first question? If yes, give me a one. These are very, very simple questions. Some exercise, you know. All right. So go for the first one, the premise. Okay. So now you guys tell me, huh? So you guys got pay attention to my question now. Okay. So A, if I ask premise, so premise, you tell me either A asset or liability L or equity formula EP. All right, so premise is, okay, let's see. A, A, yes, premise is asset. All right, and to be more specific, this is a asset bukan semasa. All right, okay, second one. Account belum bayar, tell me. Yes, liability. And this liability, more specific, would be a liability semasa. Okay, now modal. So modal will be in the equity formula. All right, so equity formula, three things, very simple. Either modal, either untung rugi, or ambilan. All right, so yes, it's EP, equity formula. Okay, account belum terima? Asset. And this asset is actually an asset semasa. All right. Pinjaman. Yeah. Liability. Liability bukan semasa. Ambilan. Yeah. EP. Very good. Very good. Bank. Yes. Very good. Asset semasa, yeah. So bank is asset semasa. ABT is asset uh, semasa. All right. Okay, now, lengkapan. Are you sure it's A? Are you sure it's A? Lengkapan, woh. You see lengkapan where? It's A or L, lengkapan. Lengkapan. Lengkapan is A. All right. Kelengkapan lengkapan is a asset bukan semasa, so it is a asset, alright. So it's a. So lengkapan a this is a asset bukan semasa. Now overdraft bank, this is a very hard one. Overdraft bank, yep, is a liability. Wow, you guys are so good. So, but this is a liability semasa LS. Right now, what about tonight? And a a okay, yeah, is a and it is a asset semasa inventory. A juga yes, and this is an asset semasa juga. All right, okay. What about gada janji now? L yeah, we just talked about gada janji, and this gada janji is a Liability bukan semasa. Alright. Okay, last one. Kenderaan. Wow, wow. Semua correct. Huh? Very good. Huh? You see? So, these are the asset, liability, and equity permit. Are you guys okay with it? If yes, you give me a K. K for classifica. C. Great. Okay, now let's continue for question two. All right, question two is a very simple question. But before I come to question two, let me introduce 
something to you. All right. Uh, do I need this formula now or later? Let's see. Ah, uh. la 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 la. Jumla asset. Yep. Okay. So here is a formula that every one that study accounts must know. Right? Is a formula called asset equals to liability plus equity per million. And maybe again, asset equals to liability plus equity per million. And from this formula, we can actually uh, rearrange it to become more formula. Okay, so from here, we can actually move to, if you want to get an equity per million, you can move L to the other equation. So it becomes asset minus your liability. All right. And if you want to find a liability, same thing. You just move your EP to the other side. So your asset minus your equity per million, then you'll find your liability. All right. So make sure you memorize this formula. Asset equals to liability plus equity per million. If you have done memorizing it, give me the formula. I mean, don't know. If, just put a yes in the chat box. A equals to L plus EP. Okay, it's just like your y equal to mx plus c. And this is your maths equation. All right, but now here you don't need to go so extreme. All right, we don't have a variable here. Okay, here is just very simple. I said equals to L plus EP. Okay, from here, we can actually go a, a little bit further. All right, so therefore I, I make something for you here. You, when you look at it, you don't confuse yourself. Okay, now we go one by one. Okay, equity formula. What is the formula for equity formula? Just now we saw it here. This is the formula for equity formula. So equity formula equals to modal plus untung rugi minus ambulan. All right. So since we have an equity formula, I can you know go further. So from equity formula, I take out I change it to this thing. Equity per million equals to model plus unknown per se, tolak ambilan. Therefore, I can make this formula. Asset equals to liability plus model plus unknown per se minus ambilan. Can you see it? And if I go further again, how do I get unknown per se actually? Unknown per se is actually equals to hasil, what you earn, minus what you belanja. Then you get your unknown per se. Oh, therefore, here, instead of untung bersi, it becomes a hasil tolak belanja. So, your asset equals liability plus modal plus hasil tolak belanja minus ambilan. Are you still with me? If yes, give me okay, okay. Okay, but now you don't have to go so far. Okay, I just explained to you how it works. It's just like mathematics, and this is very simple mathematics. All right. So come to here. Let's try a question. This one. Now, here is all the asset, liability, and equity per million. Okay, and now we are to hitungkan jumlah aset bagi perniagaan tersebut. Okay, what is the formula? First, the, the, the most basic formula is asset equals to liability plus equity per million. So now we want to find this one, to find the A, the jumlah asset. Okay, but actually, right, actually, uh, you don't have to go that far, lah, okay? You can... From this general asset, you just find the asset and then you just add up. Okay, I, I'm trying to make it complicated, but it's very simple. So from this question, okay, we use this later. But for this question, it's very simple. I thought it's very hard, but not really. So you just need to find out all the assets. So what are the assets? This is not. Model is in EP, right? And then the alatan pejabat, yes. Kenderaan, yes. ABT, yes. ABB, no, because it is a liability. Inventory, yes. The bank, yes. The two nine, yes. Undu say no, because it's in the equilibrium. Is it not? So from here, you just add up the figure. All the take one. 
So you got 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 8,000. And then you plus the 4,500, 7,000, and 2,500. So you're elaborating that is your Joomla job asset. So Joomla asset equals to Fifty-two thousand. All right. Do you get it? If yes, give me a fifty-two thousand in the chat box. And now do you know how to do you know how to find this Joomla asset? So it's just as simple as that. So this is your first question of calculation. Wow, and you got it correctly. Congratulations. So this is your first step to success in your principal accountant. All right, you may clap for yourself if you want. Okay, now, you still have another two minutes. Let's not waste our time. Okay, now, question three. Okay, more calculation. Okay, so how do you do this question three? Ah, this is the time where we apply this formula. Asset equals to liability plus equity per million. Ah, okay, okay. Now, let's see. Now, we want to find asset. Okay, number one, ah, we're going to find asset because this is unknown. So, already given a liability and already given equity per million. So, you just add up. And how much do you get? 75,000. Yes. See? Very simple. So, this is accounting. You don't have to do DYDX like your NMATS. All right, you don't have to go for those radius or diameter, just simple plus, minus, times, and divide. These are the four things that we, we're using. Okay, we won't go for integration, uh, differentiation, double differentiation, and so on. Okay, now continue two. And what about number two? Now you want to find EP, equity per million. Here is unknown. So you just from here you rearrange, you find EP. So EP equals to asset minus. Liability. Agree or not? Yes or no? Agree or not? Agree? Yep. So from here, you got asset ready. So you minus the liability. So you use 80,000 minus your 56,000. You get how much? 24,000. Yes. Ta -da. There you go for your equity per million. Okay. One more, this one. So from here, from this, come back to this. Uh, you just need to memorize one stuff, which is asset equals to liability plus equity per million. Okay, now, kita ada hasil dan belanja. Okay, by the way, this one, I think it should be cancel it. You make it a model. Right, make it more down instead. Okay, so from here, asset liability. So I have to change this thing, your equity per million, okay, to this formula. So from the equity per million, I remember that equity per million equals to uh, modal awal plus untung besi tolak ambilan. All right, so you put it in. So your asset equals to liability plus modal plus untung besi tolak your ambilan. And how do you get this untung besi? Untung besi equals to your hasil minus your belanja. So you write back everything here. Plus modal. Asset equals to liability plus modal plus hasil tolak uh, belanja, tolak ambilan. Okay, but in this question, no ambilan, so we don't have to care about the ambilan. So come back to here. So how is how much is the asset? So you just use, you need 20,000 plus your modal, right? And then you plus your hasil, but you have to minus your belanja. So how much do you get? Yep. Okay. Is it? Sixty. 
correct? Is it wood? But what about now? You want to find belanger. Ah, so now you have to move. Okay, you have to move stuff. So from this equation, so you just need to move the B la actually because this B is minus ma, right? So you move minus B to the other equation, it becomes a positive belanger. And I just want B stay there. The rest go to the right. So this A, we move to the other column. All right, the other equation. So it becomes a minus. So it becomes liability plus modal plus hasil minus ambilan. And then you have to minus your asset. Is it? So now, use your liability 4,300 plus your modal 10,000. And then uh, plus your hasil 2,310. And then minus your asset, which is 10,300. Then you get 6310. Can you all get it? If yes, you put a 6310 into the chat box. Mm, very good. So this is numbers. So before that, we actually cover all the theory. Okay, not all actually. In accounting, there's let's say 100%. So there are about 20% of theory and 80% of calculation. And of this 20%, I think we have covered about 50% of the theory. Uh, another 5% will be later in the chapters. But after that, now mostly we'll be touching on the numbers, calculation, calculate, calculate. Ah, all right. So it's really 10 or 4. So next week we'll start off from this number 4. Okay. So here we'll be using the concept from here. So you need to, you must master this formula. Asset equals to liability plus equity per million. All right, so before you leave, it's time to give homework, right? So the homework will be from this class onwards, I'll be using this book now. All right, so all your homework will be based from this uh, workbook. So first one, you go to your page eight. Okay, page eight, it's time to refresh your memory. All right, page eight. If you haven't gotten your book yet, make sure you write it down. So once you get your book, you can do it. So page eight, do question 20. It's time to refresh your memory. Okay, all those, uh, what? Bang itirafan hasil dan belanja, entity pasingan. What? Peterusan, no? Usaha berterusan, ketekalan, uh, all these things. It's time to use back and apply to the questions. All right. Then after that will be page 22. Okay. So the page 22, you see something similar. So I want you to do more practice on it. So you go to do uh, question 11. 12 and 13. You see, 12 and 13 is actually almost similar. But I want to use a formula again and again so that uh, you really understand it. Okay. So, um, that's all. I think a bit too little uh, the questions. Never mind. Uh, okay. So, that's all the, the homework for today. So, make sure you do it. Yeah. So, if you have noted down, what you have to do for your homework, then you may leave. Okay, so I will see you in next class next week. Bye-bye.